Hi everyone, it's Jane Orvien and we're back with beloved Swedish friend and we're going to take a look at some more bandaging. So I've set up, as per the last videos, I've got rid of the five centimeter. I've only got the seven and a half centimeter sitting here. I have got nice amounts of cotton wool and I've got the dreaded splints. And I thought I would start off, sorry Swedish friend, I'm taking you out of the shot. Swedish friend does want his leg repaired very badly. I thought I would talk a little bit about splints because you've got six minute tasks at the moment for the diploma and um, standard OSCEs. Um, if you're doing pre-registration OSCEs, you get more to do, but you get 10 minutes. So still, there's a lot to do in the bandaging task and the splint can take a while because you're bandaging the whole leg. You'll probably be offered two splints. They will be different sizes. So although by looking visually, you will probably be able to tell Mm, cat size is probably not going to fit him it's still beneficial to actually just measure up hold up no that is going to be too narrow this yes that would be suitable the length is acceptable because although obviously they're not out to trick you it is possible that you could get two splints the same width but different lengths so you want to check that one of the things we get confused at with splints is one, we probably don't use this type that often in practice, so which way round do they go? Because the cup looks nice over the foot, but because this is for a limb, it also looks quite nice over the elbow. You can use it either way, whichever is comfortable for you. I'll repeat that again, you can use it either way round. Getting it on the correct leg is the most important part. My advice is always to use the cup end for the elbow, purely because when you get up to bandaging here, this creates a nicer smooth curve for the elbow to bandage on. If you're bandaging against this with not much padding on it and you haven't got time to pad extra like you would at work, this can actually make it look really jaggedy. And when you're in exam nerves, that can make you focus and think, oh my goodness, I've done something wrong when actually you haven't. So that's the way around it goes. Extra padding, we know in practice that you would probably soft down the outside of this or you would cotton wool extra or you would pad on the leg more. In a six minute exam or even in the 10 minute pre-reg oskies, you have got time literally to put this on and get you three layers on and any dressing that you need. You haven't got much time to spare unless you are like a bandaging ninja, but I haven't met many of those. So. If you are concerned in the exam and it's your habit to pad, I would recommend get some cotton wool and literally pad up top and bottom like that. It's going to make you feel more comfortable. For this end, it's going to feel much nicer um, for bandaging round because it won't be all sharp. But that would be enough. You've demonstrated that you understand it would need some extra padding if you want to. And it's not going to take up too much time. Splint wise again, the order in which it goes can be a bit confusing. So if you need to put a dressing on, that would obviously go first. You would then pad, splint, secure splint with conforming, no tape needed, Confuse, <laughs> secure splint, can't say that, with conforming. And then obviously, your outer protective layer. So that is padding, splint, conforming, protective. If you can remember it in that order, that would be lovely. So I'm now going to call on my beautiful assistant who is going to come and help me get a splint on Swedish friend. Thanks for watching. 